His face was once a regular presence on the airwaves, but the former CEO of Papa John's Pizza, John Schnatter, experienced a dramatic fall from grace as he was forced out of the company he founded after reports that he used a racial slur on a training conference call in 2018. But now Schnatter has tapes that he says tell his side of the story as he tries to repair his reputation. In an interview in 2019, you said, stay tuned, the day of reckoning will come, the record will be straight. Is that why you're here today? I think that's one of the reasons I'm here, but uh, for sure the truth's going to come out. Nothing sells like the truth, and uh, the tape is the truth. What John Schnatter calls the truth has never been heard until now. It's the tape of an incident that led to the erasure of the man who for decades made his name and face synonymous with his multi-billion dollar company. John Schnatter was not only the founder of Papa John's, but also its front man. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. In 2010, Papa John's became the official pizza sponsor of the NFL. Better ingredients, better pizza, better football, Papa John's. But in 2017, sales were sliding, and Schnatter appeared to place the blame on the NFL's handling of player protests during the national anthem, which had become a political football. Wouldn't you love to see one of these NFL owners when somebody disrespects our flag to say, get that son of a off the field right now, out, he's fired. He's fired. In a conference call to discuss quarterly earnings, Schnatter said the NFL is hurting and more importantly, by not resolving the current debacle to the player and owner's satisfaction, NFL leadership has hurt Papa John's shareholders. This should have been nipped in the bud a year and a half ago. Papa John's immediately faced backlash from those who said the company was opposing the player protests against police brutality, a claim Schnatter says was inaccurate. Papa John's is a family of small businesses, and the NFL is our biggest spend. And so every year when the fall came around, our sales would go up. When the controversy started, uh, sales did the other, they went down. So you would say that you were never anti the protests? Oh, absolutely not. Um, in fact, I think uh, criminal justice reform uh, has to happen. But immediately after his 2017 comments on the NFL, Schnatter's words were latched onto by hate groups online. The neo-Nazi site, the Daily Stormer, dubbing Papa John's the official pizza of the alt-right, a claim Papa John's immediately disavowed. Not again. A few months later, Papa John's and the NFL had ended their partnership, and Schnatter had stepped down from his role as CEO in what he says was a planned transition. Schnatter remained the board chairman, but the damage to his reputation remained, prompting the company to hire a marketing agency called Laundry Service to work to rebuild Schnatter's image. In May of 2018, Schnatter joined a call for what he says was planned as a discussion about how to get him back into Papa John's commercials. The purpose of the call was very clear. We had a marketing meeting the week before, and the call was about the creative, strategic uh, creative, and what do we do as far as putting me back in the ads. Once I got on the call, they switched it from this is a brand marketing strategic initiative to this is going to be a diversity call with regards to race. It was on that call that Schnatter uttered the words that would lead to his undoing. When two months later, allegations appeared publicly in a July 2018 Forbes report that he used a racial slur during that call. The face of Papa John's pizza is changing. Now to that breaking news overnight, Papa John's founder resigning as chairman of the board for the pizza chain. Papa John's shares fell nearly 5%. Fallout was swift. He was wiped from all marketing and says he had to step down from the board of the company he launched in 1984 out of a broom closet of his father's bar in Indiana. When you build something with your bare hands from nothing and then you um, get thrown out of the, really thrown, kicked to the street. I mean, the board of directors on a Wednesday were my biggest fans and then all of a sudden Sunday they kicked me to the curb. Uh, I, I would have liked a decent burial. But now he feels a resurrection is in order as a result of these newly released recordings. I hope he gets sent out to the pastor on this. I really, really. According to Schnatter, the training call had been recorded without his knowledge by Laundry Service, the company Papa John's had hired to help his image. And now he says for the first time, people can hear for themselves what was said on that call. On the call, Schnatter disavows racist groups, and he again downplays his comments from the prior year on the NFL protests. It wasn't intentional to be insensitive to police brutality. I mean, that wasn't even in my mind. 
or, you know, be, an, you know, anti-supportive. But at the end of the call, he expresses frustration over his being tied to racists over his comments on the NFL and instead points to another famous fast food founder. What bothers me is Colonel Sanders called black I'm like, I've never used that word. And they get away with it. Well, yeah, we use the word debacle. We get framed in the same, uh, same genre. It's crazy. The whole thing's crazy. The family of Colonel Sanders has denied he ever used racist language and in 2018 called Schnatter's claim a, quote, absolute lie. In retrospect, what do you think about your use of the actual word? Well, I said the word. I didn't use the word. I cited the word. I mentioned the word. I paraphrased what another founder uh, used to say or did that I would never say. Um, have I over again what I wish I'd have said the N-word? Of course. <laughs> of course. So why didn't you? The context was used as a contrast. I never used the word. This guy uses the word. I never used that word. It was to make a point. Do you think that it's possible to not have racist intent but still have racist impact? I think if you use a racial slur, you have ill intent. You know, I think if you cite the word as an example, not don't use that word. I don't think that's ill intent. I think that is anti-racist. Absolutely. Would you agree that the N word, the real word is arguably the weightiest word in the English language? And I'm wondering if you felt that only in the aftermath or if at the time when you said it, you knew the power of actually stating the N word, because if you had just said the N word, we probably wouldn't even be talking about this right now. Right. Um, I think the word, the reason I was using it in the context and the reference I was is because I despise the word. Don't use that word. I never use the word. If I had over it again, would I not use the word? Absolutely. Do you think that you exercised good leadership by using the actual word? If I had it over again, I would use the N word instead of saying Colonel Sanders actually calls black people the word. I definitely would use the N word. Um, not the word. His focus has now shifted to another word, setup. When you look on the surface, it looks like I caused the problem. When you really dig into it, you can see that laundry servers authored the problem and they set me up. Many people are going to have a hard time understanding. Laundry service was hired by Papa John's to help you, right? So why <laughs> would they, as you call, set you up? Laundry service was hired to protect me. Uh, it actually came to be that they persecuted me. They were persecutors. They did evil deeds and they tried to hide them. Schnatter is suing Laundry Service and its parent company, Wasserman Media, alleging in a recently unsealed amended complaint that Laundry Service acted with ill intent and to use Mr. Schnatter's comments against him by leaking the comments to Forbes, stating in the complaint that defendant's conduct was malicious, intentional, unfair, and unreasonable under the circumstances. Laundry Service has responded, seeking to dismiss the suit, denying that they leaked his remarks on the call to Forbes. And they argue that Schnatter, who voluntarily resigned from the board following the Forbes article, scored an own goal by using vile racist language and is the architect of his own demise. But through the legal discovery process, it was revealed that someone within Laundry Service continued recording their conversation after Schnatter left the May 2018 call after his use of the racial slur. That's when former Laundry Service CEO Jason Stein made these comments. I hope he gets sent out the pastor on this. I really, really it. Super racist. And Stein then added that he wanted Schnatter to make similar remarks in a public interview. I just wanted to go and speak truth. And I want to write down the bullet points and then let him go. He just has to make sure it's an hour long conversation yep. so that he says like he said here. When you first heard that tape, the one that was taped internally by laundry service, what was your reaction? Well, I used to tell my friends, I said, you know, I, you're not gonna believe this. I think I was set up. And now with the tape, it's like they understand because it's, it's so far fetched that an agency that's supposed to be your protector is actually going to set you up to be the worst thing you can be uh, in this day and age, in, in this situation, uh, at this time. 
is to be painted as a racist. As Schnatter tries to clear his name, he's pointing to a report commissioned by his attorneys by former director of the FBI, Louis Free, from this past December, saying Schnatter's comments were neither intended nor can reasonably be interpreted to reflect any racial bias and that his comments were wildly taken out of context by some media and others. I think it's a series of vindication. I think the Louis Free report uh, vindicated. I think the uh, initial tape exonerates me because um, it was uh, anti-racist um, at, uh, at the best. And then, of course, uh, the latest tape from Laundry Service indicts them. So I think it's vindication all the way around. I think it's, it's a total 360. I just want to get an understanding from you because when you say the tape exonerates me, I think people are going to think that he didn't learn the lesson. He didn't learn the power of when he uttered a word, even when he's using it to say, I don't use this word. Right. Well, for, for sure, you, you learn your lesson for, in going through this uh, by like a thousand fold, maybe more. Um, that's why I don't like cancel culture. Um, you know, if I can uh, make sure my grandkids and kids don't have to live with this, my friends don't have to live with this, I clear my name. And then we point out the fact is don't rush to judgment. With that's the problem with cancel culture. Whether either side of the aisle is there's a rush to judgment. Um, it can be taken out of context. It can be built on a false narrative, and it can destroy people's lives. And so you feel that you were an unfair victim of cancel culture. I totally feel like I was a victim of cancel culture. I mean, it was a false narrative. But Schnatter himself has had some difficulty selling his story. Earlier this month, Schnatter appeared on OAN, a far-right cable channel, when word of the laundry service tapes was first reported. And we've had three goals for the last 20 months, to get rid of this uh, N-word uh, in my uh, vocabulary. What did you mean to say when you said, I'm trying oh, to get the N-word out of my vocabulary? I transposed my vocabulary to the media vocabulary. The media needs to get rid of this vocabulary with regards to me. It's not the in my association. Yeah, the association. It was the media's vocabulary, association with me, not my vocabulary. Again, I never use the word. I'm offended by the word. And in that May 2018 training call with Laundry Service, he did make disparaging remarks about NFL players and Commissioner Roger Goodell. He's destroying these players' bodies. He's destroying these players' minds. They're all beating their wives up. He's destroying their families. But Schnatter stands by the majority of his comments on that fateful 2018 call, which his team has now posted in full online. Well, the entire 55 minutes was basically anti-racist because the way I was raised and the way I treat people and uh, the way we, we ran Papa John's was all about people. Um, you know, now we have a tape, we have the truth. It remains to be seen whether the tale of that tape provides the vindication he's seeking. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.